Hello and welcome to part three of the Space Rocks Godot engine series. In the last part, we wrapped up the basics of our player ship and its shooting. And now it's time to start talking about implementing the asteroids. We're going to make some asteroids that fly around the screen and will give us something to shoot at. So as always, there's a link below to the code for the previous part if you want to follow along and also the code for this part if you want to see the final result of this video. All right, let's get started. All right, we're ready to start adding our asteroids. So I'm going to create a new scene for them. And for the root, we are going to use the kinematic body 2D for these asteroids. And the reason I'm going to use that is I want these asteroids, when they're flying around the screen, to actually bounce off of each other. I want them to hit each other and look like they're solid and give the impression that we are you know, flying through an asteroid belt like in The Empire Strikes Back. And so I'm going to save this in the scenes called Asteroid. And then for the appearance, we're going to add a, we're just going to add a standard sprite, another one of my favorites. And just for the purposes of getting this first one going, we're going to go over into the art folder and pick a good image. There's a lot of gray and brown asteroids of various sizes. I'm going to take this four one. Okay. And there it is. Oops. Let's make sure we're keeping everything together. And we're going to need a collision shape for this. I think a circle is going to make the most sense. Collision shape, we add a circle shape and we'll just drag it to a good, there we go, approximation of the shape of the asteroid. I'm just going to rename this to collision. All right, now we just need to add a script to this to make it move around. So we're going to add a script, put it in our scripts folder, asteroid, create, okay. Now, if you watched the Godot 101 video I did, we're basically going to make this like the little bouncing sprite that goes around the screen. We're going to have a velocity that's just going to be a vector 2. We're going to have a rotation speed that's going to be how fast the asteroid spins. I want it to randomly have some bit of you know tumbling going on. And then we're going to, here in our ready we are going to randomize so that we can pick a random value for that we're going to set fixed process to true we're going to set the velocity to something random i'm going to say rand range and we're just i'm just going to put some values in here for now we're going to come back and set these to uh, a range that we like once we see how it works. Okay, and then we're going to rotate it a random amount. And this is going to be in radians, so we want our rand range to be between 0 and 2 pi. And then our rot speed we also want to randomize. So I want this range to be something like one point, negative 1.5 to 1.5. So some will be clockwise, some will be counterclockwise. And now in our fixed process, we're going to update the rotation. So we're just going to say set rotation to whatever the rotation is now plus the rotation speed times delta. And then we're going to say move velocity times delta. And you want to use move when you're moving a physics body, a kinematic body 2D or one of the other physics bodies, because what move does is it tries to move the object whatever distance this is, but will stop if it detects a collision. So that's how you make your object stop when it hits a wall or whatever. In our, or in our case, we're going to make it stop when it hits another, it hits another meteor. You don't want to use set pause very much with physics bodies because it'll mess up the physics calculations and you'll get some weird results. So you want to try to avoid doing that. Okay, so let's see what we have so far. 
When we hit run, we get a meteor. It's rotating, going off in a random direction with some rotation. Okay, so that's good. Okay, I've skipped ahead a little bit since we did this in a previous video. I've just added variables here to track the screen size and the extents of our texture, which I'm getting in the ready function. I'm just getting the viewport rect and I'm getting the set texture size of the sprite and I'm dividing it by two because I care about how far the edge is from the center because our position is tracking the center of the sprite. And then down here I'm just, I've got four if statements that are just detecting where the position is and if it moves off the edge, resetting its position to the opposite edge. And I know I said try not to use set pause, but since we'll be teleporting from one side over here to the other side over here, there's not going to be any physics going on around there, at least not hopefully too much. So that should work pretty well. Let's run this real quick just so we can see. There goes the meteor, and when it goes off the side, There we go. Okay, so now we won't lose any of our meteors. So eventually we're going to want to take these images and use all of these different graphics for our asteroid. If we go look at the sprite here, this one is one of the big ones, but we could also use a medium one, which is that much smaller. Uh, there's a small size like that and then there's even a tiny one like that. But of course, every time we change the texture size, we're going to need to change this circle because the circle is not going to match. So we're going to do that because what we eventually want is when the, the bullet hits this big one, it's going to explode and split into two or maybe more smaller ones. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to stick with this and talk about how we're going to do the collisions. So it's time to make our main scene. So I'm going to hit new scene here and I'm going to make it just have a node as its root. This is going to be main. We're going to save in our scenes folder. And it's going to have as a child, we're going to load one of the player nodes there. All right. And then we're also going to grab a few of these asteroids. I just want to have Right. Again, we'll do this differently once we have it all working, but I want to put, oh, let's say five of these in here. Now, because these are physics bodies, they are going to collide. So we need to spread these out so they do not uh, spawn inside of each other. That's going to be a problem. So now when we run this, we should see them moving around. Now, what's going to happen when they run into each other is they're just going to stop moving. Right? They're going to try to keep going at the same velocity because we're not changing their velocity any. But when one of them gets in the way, it's just going to kind of block the other one until they sort of slide past each other. And that's not what we want. That doesn't look good at all. Okay, so we go back over to our script. What we're going to do is after we move, we're going to check and see if is colliding is true. That's going to tell us so this function will return true if this physics body has run into another physics body. And if it is, we want to change the velocity, or change the direction right, of the velocity. So we're going to take whatever the velocity is now, and we're going to add get collision normal. The normal of a collision is a vector, a unit vector, length of one, pointing away from, directly away from the surface of the collision. So this is going to be pointing away from the sprite we ran into. So uh, if we look over here at the picture for a second, right, if I'm coming along here and I hit this, and I hit this asteroid, the collision normal is going to be pointing you know, directly away like that. So that's the direction that I want the velocity to be altered by. So I'm going to take that I'm going to multiply it by whatever, whatever the thing I ran into's velocity is, the magnitude of it, times some bounce factor. 
And this is something we can tweak to get them just the way we want. So I'm going to put that up here at the top as a, a thing that we can adjust. And we're going to export that. And for the moment, we're going to use 1.1 for that. Okay. And so that's how we're going to adjust our velocity. And let's take a look at what happens now when they bump into each other. Our randomness is making them not run into each other. Let's try another one. There we go. See how they bounce off of each other? That's pretty good. Let's try a couple more just to be sure. There we go. See, that was really nice. But now it lo doesn't look very exciting, right? They're, they're behaving the way we want them to behave. It doesn't look very nice. So now we're just going to pretty it up a little by adding a little effect to that bounce. All right, so over on the asteroid, we are going to add a new node called a Particles 2D. So I don't want that to be a child of Sprite. I want it to be a child of the asteroid. Okay, and this is going to be, I'm going to call this a puff. That's good. This is going to be a little puff of debris that's going to puff out there when, the, when two of these run into each other. And you can see when you first add a particle node, it just starts streaming out some little dust particles. And that's not really what we are going to want it to do. Um, first of all, let's put it at the let's put it on the edge so we can at least look at it the way we're going to want to see it. So I'm just going to shift it over. So let's say we'll do 40. Yeah, 40. Okay, 35 by 35 is going to do it. Okay, I just want to see it somewhere near the edge of the meteor. Um, we're going to programmatically choose where it happens, but for right now. So now there's tons and tons of settings that you can play around with for particles, and they're endless fun to mess around with. But a few of the things we want to change. I want the lifetime to be a lot shorter. All right, it's not, this is not going to last a long time. Um, I want the timeout. I'm going to want these to not last very long, so I'm going to change that to 0.4. And now every time it starts, it's going to stop again. See, if I click it on, it clicks back off again. So we're just going to puff out a little bit. I'll zoom in so you can see it even better. Okay, so that's that, but that's not looking right yet. Um, we're also going to go down to explosiveness. I'm going to make that 0 0.1 and what that's going to do is just make it more of a burst instead of a stream. Right. Okay, so that's good. And now a few other things we want to change here. I'm going to change spread here to 180. Right. That'll make it spread out more. I'm going to change linear velocity to 50 a little bit higher. I'm going to change gravity to zero. I don't want them to fall in any uh, direction. And I'm going to change initial and final size. I'm going to make the initial size five and the final size zero. Okay, now if we try this one, what it's going to look like. See, it looks like a burst of stuff coming out. And I don't want it to look like that ring, though. I want it to be a little bit more randomized. So I'm going to go to half extents here. And I'm going to set that to 10 by 10 because that's going to make them spread out more. There we go. So that's going to look good. And if I zoom back out to more like what we're going to see on the screen, there we go. We just have a little puff of stuff coming off. And now back to our script, we are going to grab that node. so that we have a reference to it. And then we want to spawn one of these whenever there's a collision. 
So in the if is colliding, what we're going to do is we're going to take the puff, we're going to set its global position to get the to get collision pause. So set its position to where the collision happened. So it looks like it happened there. And we're going to set emitting to true because we want it to start going. And because we made it its lifetime short, it will stop again. So if we go and run our main scene, we should see some little sparks when they run into each other. Nice. Okay, that will do it for part three. Starting to come together. In the next video, we will start talking about how to make the bullets destroy these meteors, have the meteors be different sizes, and have the meteors run into the player, because right now we just fly straight through them. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.